Hello, Reactis. Good morning and welcome to Touch Point today, being the 19th of July 2023. Once again, my name is God Give Austin, your anchor and regular host on this channel, Royal Crown Church of God. We pick the Bible, we pick topics, and uh, try to see how they reflect our lives or affect us scripturally and the mind of God in those areas. Once again, we have been talking about absolute, and this morning we continue from where we stopped. The first question in today's uh, episode is what are some of the absolutes of the Christian faith? What are some of the absolutes of the Christian faith? Some really in Exodus 21 to 17. They then God gave the people all of these instructions. You must not have any other God but me. God gave us the Ten Commandments. They are absolute truths. That apply to all people in all culture for all time. Obeying this commandment will point one's life in the right direction, make it more fulfilling and satisfying, avoiding much harm and keeping one's focus on the only God who can grant eternal life. Amen. In Psalm 147, verse 5, the Bible says, How great is our God! His word, his power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. In Numbers chapter 11 verse 23, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Has my arm lost its power? Now you will see whether or not my word come true. Acts chapter 5 verse 29, For Peter and the apostle replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. In Romans chapter 8, 31 to 39, Can anything ever separate us from the love of Christ? No, nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God. In Malachi chapter, six verse, chapter 3 verse 6, the Bible says, I am the Lord. And I do not change. That is why you, you, you descendant of Jacob, are not already destroyed. It is absolute truth. The reason that we are not destroyed is the fact that the Lord does not change. In Hebrews chapter 6, 17 to 18, God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. Amen. In Hebrews 13 verse 8, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. It does not change. In Numbers 23 verse 19, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried his, it through? That is God for you. His words are here and they are amen. I also read First Chronicles 16 verse 34. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Amen. In James 1 verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift from God to us. 
from God our Father who created all the light in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. God's character is unchanging. He is consistently all-powerful, absolutely good, the originator of truth, all-wise, consistently faithful, and loves us unconditionally. Praise the Lord. That is powerful. In John 14 verse 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to my Father except through me. In Acts 16 verse 31, they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. In Romans chapter 3 verse 22 and 30, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. There is only one God and he makes people right with himself only by faith, whether they are Jews or Gentiles. Amen? In Romans chapter 6 verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life the, but the gift, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So, there is absolutely only one way for a person to enjoy eternal life in heaven. Salvation is a gift from God, available to us through faith in Christ Jesus alone. Not even from any other demon or any other thing you may want to hold on to. Amen. In Acts of Apostles chapter 13, 38 to 39, it says, Brother, listen, we are here to proclaim that through this man, Jesus, there is forgiveness for our sins. Everyone who believes in him is made right in God's sight, something the law of Moses could never do. Yes, the law of Moses talks about your strength, Kana, your power, but in Christ is grace. Your strength is not in, in play. It is Christ and Christ alone. Amen? In 1 John 1 verse 9, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. In other words, God's forgiveness is what absolute. When he forgives you, it is forever. He never takes it back. And this is what I tell people. If God has given you life, remain in Him. Stop being afraid. Stop regurgitating over the past. No man can say a thing and it is stand in your life. Whose report will you believe? The report of the Lord. If report of the Lord, why are you panicking? Why are you afraid that somebody wants to do this to you and this? No! They don't have power. They are powerless, especially when they are dead. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 24 and 31. The Bible says, But God released him from the horror of death and raised him back to life. For death could not keep him in its grip. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to, to, not, to rot in the grave. Praise the Lord. And I want us to stop here. This is absolute truth. God is all we need. If you are not born again, God is calling on you to have a rethink of your ways. In God is everything you need. Every child of God has been given life. But you must reclaim, lay hold on the life that has been given to you freely. In Christ is life, outside him is crisis and death. Would you want Christ to take hold of your life this morning and give it a meaning so that tomorrow you will not just be existing, but you know you are living? Bow down your heads, let's pray. Say, Father, write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior today, O Lord. Give me a new beginning. Give me a fresh life. I want to live like you and reign with you in eternity. Thank you because I'm born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
God bless you.